Mm-hmm. Um, would you say uh, discipleship and s- say sonship, salvation, mm-hmm. would you say they go hand in hand? Like is discipleship a requirement for salvation or is it more of an aspect of say our Christian living? I would say that discipleship is important after salvation, not before it. Because Jesus would says you to say go it, disciples. Sure, you know, I, and I agree. Would you say that every born again Christian, after they're saved, will be a disciple? They will have that discipleship. Well, there's some people that believe that they are part that they are born again and such, but they never really um, do receive much of that. And there's where there was a time I fell into that, and I started believing in all kinds of a. Uh, bad theologies and that was part of it because i didn't get the whole discipleship uh, thing there i didn't have anyone that was able to help guide me when i did the whole thing of just picking up a bible and reading it um i picked up a king james version and i was coming up with ideas that look it's a bible verse that teaches everyone is saved universal rec- universal reconciliation salvation is biblical and we get this only from the king james and i was like going around promoting this for like three months until i ended up changing to other sections and um for for about a while i almost was uh believing that you know that jesus uh was a shapeshifter that he was able to turn into different people um and that so, and so he had these like supernatural powers that were part of his human nature so i mean i had all kinds of strange ideas but i didn't bother wanting to go to church or look for someone to help disciple me in and understanding things It wasn't until I really got on the internet and started then going to church that I started having um, online and then in the real world discipleship um, being done. Um, But that was after the fact that I had already heard the gospel message um, that was done. Okay, would you say that, um, I guess discipleship, I feel would be a a form of work. So would you say, I understand that you believe in you know salvation by faith alone, but faith is never alone. So would you say that all born again Christians have works? Like there's no born again Christians who don't have the works. Yeah, I think all born again Christians have to have uh, works. Just a reminder, by the way, that we try to make sure to limit one question per person in the round and the rounding that we go in, so that we get time to have other people uh, answer well, to I, ask I, their questions. Like. I guess my point is, um, regarding the question, is that your debate with Matt Powell, I think your disagreement was Matt Powell puts discipleship, fellowship, obedience. He puts that in the category of spiritual education. Salvation and sonship, on the other hand, that's just a one-time deal. That's leave on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But obviously, we still have our flesh. Mm-hmm. We still have our spirit. We war against each other. If we're walking in the flesh, who's mm-hmm. to say that we're going to have that fellowship or we're going to have that discipleship? I mean, it's up to us to put on the new man, to walk in the spirit. So in the, the day, Romans 4, 5 says, you know, to him that worketh not. So, I mean, it sounds like there's people that work not, mm-hmm. believe, and they're saved. So I don't understand how every Christian also is going to have the works. And I guess the, that would be the end of what I'd have to say. Right. So, I mean, that wasn't the main issue of the debate. The main issue was that Matt was uh, saying concerning, he was saying that it was about disciple. He wasn't saying it was the main thing it was discipleship. The whole thing was that you could just make that one statement of faith and then you could be the most wicked and vilest sinner on the face of God's green earth and you're still going to heaven. Like you could just go be on a killing spree doing a bunch of drugs and uh, fornicating with uh, little children. Um, you could do this at the same time uh, before offing yourself and you'll still go to heaven uh, even without showing any sign of repenting of these sins that you had committed. And so well, I, I, that, that was the main I mean, issue I, that I had with him. I, obviously, I would say that just you know making a statement of faith doesn't mean you saved. It's believing in your heart. So if you're believing in your heart, mm-hmm. uh, those wicked sins you're talking about, I think you know going on a murder spree, I mean, I think these things are a little exaggerated. If I look at Romans 1, I think those types of 
um, sins that aren't temptations of, of just the normal man. I would say that that's someone who's probably been given over to a to a reprobate mind. I wouldn't say that just your you know normal right. born again Christian is gonna is gonna struggle with you know going on a murder spree, homosexuality, pedophilia, all these things. I would say those are. Yeah, go so, ahead. So let me let me let me go by this then. So let's say this: you meet someone, he makes the statement of faith and genuine and genuinely believes in his heart that Jesus uh, is God and believes in Him. He goes and um, shoots up a school and uh, does drugs, but he's so he does this and he kills himself. And he's done all these things I've mentioned. Is that person saved? I would I would say being saved is putting your your faith and trust, a hundred percent faith and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ and the work He did on the cross. Right, but I'm asking uh, about this specific person. That no, I, no, I, I get what you're saying. So, you know, if that person truly did that, you know, who am I to say that they're not saved? But I don't know if that even exists. I don't think someone who's born again will have that. Because I believe in the chastisement of God. God chastises and scourges every son whom he receiveth. I don't think it would get to the point where that Christian is actually going to go in and shoot up a school. Sure, drugs. I mean, smoking pot, doing whatever. Uh, we still have our flesh. We still have those temptations. Those are the, the sins of the flesh. But shooting up a school, these types of things. I mean, what about before the shooting the up a yoga place and his church... Uh, was part of this whole idea, and he said that he made he believed genuinely that Jesus was God. He made that that statement of faith. He believed genuinely. So obviously, no, even because of this, he's still going to heaven. They didn't consider this to be part of the some sort of thing to reconsider. It's like absolutely, it doesn't even matter that he did this. He's still going to heaven. I've had I've had personal encounters, even soul winning, talking to people where these professing Christians are living in sin. They're doing this, they're doing that. When I have an actual in-depth conversation with them, I find out that they're believing in a false gospel. I find out that they're believing in some type of works. It's all about them. They're looking to themselves for salvation, not to Jesus Christ. So I'd have to actually talk to these people because a lot of people say faith alone, but mm -hmm. they don't necessarily mean faith alone. Okay. <laughs> Out of curiosity, I'm just curious, uh, from a Calvinist perspective, how do you guys deal with Romans 4, 5? Because well, man, well, we'll go on one at a time. Uh, I'm still in the middle of an trying to get to the answering of your question that you sure, sure. Okay, go so, ahead. So I want to say, so again, I felt like you didn't answer the thing that I was trying to get across, and I just want a simple yes or no. This, the analogy of the guy that I just gave, is he uh, going to heaven, yes or no? Okay, so he has put his 100% faith and trust in Jesus, in Jesus Christ and his work. Faith yes. alone, 100% trust. Yes. Well, obviously he's saved. I mean, anybody okay. who believeth on Jesus Christ is saved. I mean, it's, it's okay, what the Bible so, says. So even if he's done, okay, let's do this then. Let's say that the person has done this, but instead of uh, doing those things, let's say that he probably did kill somebody kill a, a family and got away with it no the police never found him and he still enjoyed the fact that he did it and he converted either to islam or um be, be, or became an atheist um, and died as either of those is that person saved yes or no well i don't think it's really a, a yes or no question because I don't necessarily believe that somebody can go from believing the truth to necessarily going into a full-blown lie. It's like saying, hey, I don't believe in Santa Claus anymore. Mm -hmm. And 10 years down the road, you go back to Santa Claus or you go back to the Easter Bunny. I, I don't think okay. God's going to allow it. But like I said, I believe that you know God chastises every son whom he receiveth. So I don't think we as born-again Christians can get to that point of say something a reprobate would do. You know, I think that it says their consciences are seared. And I, I don't so, see that in us, right? So he's made that statement of faith. He genuinely believed wholeheartedly 100% that he was a God, but you are doubting that it's that he could have been in heaven? If if he truly, uh, if, if he truly believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, if he truly has put his full faith and trust in Jesus, 
um, for salvation. Of course, of course he's saved. I mean, Jesus in Matthew seven says, depart from me to people who are trusting in themselves and in their works. How come they never said, but Lord, I believed in you. I put my trust and faith in you. Jesus, of course, would have said, you know, come in my child. I mean, they were saying, you know, have I not done many wonderful works? I mean, how come they were focused on works? When they weren't, we be they, focused were, on they, faith? Weren't they, they weren't, they were saying those things but they were in reality not even practicing those things. They just said it as lip service. Well, exactly. But those people said nothing about faith, nothing about trust, nothing about believing. All right, they said is, haven't we done just, many wonderful works? Right, but you said that they were trusting in their works. No, they weren't. They were just, uh, they didn't actually trust in their works. They just they, see Jesus, then they're worried, like, oh, we got to say something in order not to get in trouble. Hey, we didn't we do these things? Well, I mean, they were boasting. Wouldn't you say that that's boasting? Right, and you can boast in things that you didn't actually do. That's where, for example, politicians and such will do that. And to this day, they'll take credit for things that they didn't actually do. and But yet they're boasting. Now, what if they were boasting about their faith in Jesus? How come nothing about faith, how come nothing about trust came up in that passage? It seemed like they thought works or what get them to heaven. That's why they boasted about yeah, whether or not they did the works or they didn't do the works. That's what they were boasting about. That's what mm -hmm. clearly they were emphasizing. They weren't emphasizing faith like I would. I would emphasize faith. Hey, John 3, 16 says, if I believe on you, mm -hmm. I have everlasting life. What's going on, man? And mm -hmm. you know, if he said depart from me, well, he's a liar now. Well, this, I well, this is where we're him. misunderstanding how this is how we're interpreting the verses differently here uh, between us is that you're seeming to think that they believe that, uh, that, you know, they're trying to rely on that and that uh, try to use that because well, they obviously. believe that that's going to be given to them to salvation. Where to me, it seems that they know that along with having that genuine faith, um, they have to have a good works that follow afterwards that has fruit um, and such. And Jesus knows uh, what they'll do uh, and who these people are. And so they're trying to, to trick him and say, oh, didn't we do these things? And he uh, looks at him and says, I never knew you because you not only didn't have these works, you didn't even have faith in me. That's basically what he says when he says, I never knew ye. Because when, when you have faith in him, what's one of the things you do? You pray to him, you know Jesus, you accept Jesus. But he doesn't know these people and when he uses that, he's basically saying they didn't even rec they don't even acknowledge him. It's not until that last moment when they actually see him. So it's like a, in a similar instance, like for example, that um, say you go to high school with somebody, and uh, you know you've been bullied and harassed, and by these two guys, you end up becoming a, a rich billionaire and a celebrity, and you forgot about who these bullies of yours were. You didn't even get their names because they've been mean to you. Then all of a sudden, here they come saying, hey, man, remember when we used to do this back then? And you just simply say, who are you people? I've never known you or met you in my life. That is basically how Jesus is uh, treating uh, these people, is that they'll be basically trying to use him and only want him be because of uh, the benefits that he would suppose that he would provide to them that they desired. Well, does it say anywhere in Matthew 7, in that passage, that they have genuine, fa uh, genuine faith? I mean, all I see is them boasting about the. I don't see anywhere that indicates, hey, these people have faith, yet they're boasting about their works or emphasizing works. I didn't, and I didn't say that they had faith, that they had well, genuine how do we know faith they had there faith? either. I didn't say that they had faith. Okay, so if they had faith, would they be saved? Are you listening? Okay. They had faith that would they be saved? Yeah, if they had genuine saving faith, they would be saved. Exactly what I'm saying. So the fact that they don't have genuine saving faith is is uh, obvious in their response. They're they're right. bragging about their works. They're bragging about. Obviously, we disagree on so this. But I don't understand where the disagreement is. In I mean, I well, feel like I'm, we've gone past the question already. I just think you're asking me, you know, a, a question that's not so black and white, since. I don't really believe that a born again Christian is going to go shoot up a school. I get it's it, it's a legit so, question. Likewise, yeah, I, I see it because God chastises His children. Right, but there are people today that will set, affirm this easy believism aspect that would be in Matt Powell's camp that affirms, yeah, he could shoot up five hundred people, unrepentant, killed himself, he's in heaven, absolutely, one hundred percent, without a doubt. People that say this. That's people I have a problem with. 
Sure. And, and, and I, I completely understand that. I would just say, hey, that looks like it's a symptom of reprobation. That doesn't look like a sign or a symptom of someone who's who's saved. And I'm not saying works are a requirement for being saved, but someone who's shooting up a school, someone who's a pedophile, someone who's doing these things that are listed in, in Romans 1. Um, under reprobation, I mean, I'd have to, I'd have to identify them as either a false professor, uh, and certainly not a, a born again Christian. I mean, I, I think we're in agreement with that. All right. Well, thank you for your uh, question. I think we've 